Hello, hello, and welcome to Rhythm Radio, where we talk about creating rhythms in our days, in our bodies, in our businesses, in our lives that help us live in alignment with our values and with whatever we're looking for, more happiness, more joy, more peace, more ease, you name it. So hopefully we are live in our Rhythm and Radiance Facebook group. We are also live in Instagram. It's always a little crazy because there's two places to look. So if I'm not looking at you, don't worry. Um, so this month is all about work rhythms. And I wanted to start out the month by sharing a really great tool. You probably are familiar with it. Um, and I'm going to share my screen in our Facebook live group on the Zoom which will also go up on the YouTube channel. So if you're on Instagram, you can either Google it or, uh, and I will put the graphic in our group as well. You can, you can just Google it or you can just listen along. Either works. So let me just share my screen. We're gonna be talking briefly today about the Eisenhower matrix. And even if you know of it, you've probably heard of it, I'll share the screen button, uh, but that does not mean that you're applying it. There we go, share, always so many buttons to hit. All right, it's not taking up the whole screen right now, but you get the idea. So this is a matrix, it's a decision a decision making matrix, make it all centered here, that helps you prioritize and manage your tasks and your time. And since we're talking, so you can apply this to personal tasks as well, but our theme this month is work rhythm. So we're talking about it as it relates to work. And it basically helps you divide your activities into four priority levels. Um, and one of those levels is that bottom right hand corner, which is delete. They're things that are not urgent and they're not important. So that really means we're dropping it. Delete. It's not urgent. It's not important. Maybe you have something on your to-do list that it just keeps lingering there. Do you have those? So it's important to then evaluate why it stays on your to-do list and it never gets done. Is it really important? It's obviously not urgent if you just let it linger there. So that leaves only three categories, the other three in the nice red, blue, and green colors that, according to this diagram, that allows us to put our focus to. So the Eisenhower matrix was created by President Eisenhower and used in a lot of political and war and military, et cetera, decision-making, um, and it's been adapted in many different ways. And um, I know that, uh, I believe it was the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey used um, exactly uh, this similar type of, or the same matrix to evaluate tasks and productivity. Productivity. So let's look at the first box, upper right, uh, upper left-hand column, and that's important and urgent tasks. These are the things that are highest in priority level. They should be your primary focus. Um, you may have heard me talk a lot about setting your three most important tasks, your three MITs every day. This is where those three MITs would go. Um, they need to be completed as soon as possible. That's where you devote your energy. That's where you devote your focus. And often those need to be completed on the same day. So what I did is I pulled out my own, uh, my larger goal planner here to give some examples of my own. So today, um, one of the things that for me is urgent and important that I need to do today is some work on to prep for a training that I'm doing. I'm preparing this month um, for a training and certification at that later in the month. And so every day I have something on my list that is in this box of urgent and important. It's important because it's important me to do this thoroughly and with attention and intention. And it's urgent because there is a time sensitivity to it. It starts on a certain date. So I have to get these tasks done by that date. So that task is gonna go in there. And that means that's what I'm gonna do early in the day. That's where I've already, actually it was some of the reading I needed to do. I already did first thing in my morning practice. So that is top of the list. 
Then we look at the important but not urgent box over here. That's the decide box. It's something that's not urgent. That's not a time sensitivity, but it is important. So decide really means decide when you're going to do it or schedule it. So that's important. These are long-term goals, um, tasks that are important, but they don't have a firm deadline yet. Um, and you want to be able to schedule them in a timely manner. So once you're doing the most urgent ones first, then right after that, right after that you finished uh, the do category, you move on to the decide category. And um, looking at my Hmm, looking at my list of things to do, um, one of those things that I'm doing is working on um, creating this new workshop. I haven't set a date for it. I'd like to do it before the end of sometime in spring. We haven't even gotten to the actual official date of spring yet. I want to do it in spring. I have a like a basic outline. I could easily put that on the back burner over and over and over again, but it is important to me and it is part of the work that I'm doing. So I need to schedule, I need to decide to schedule a time when I'm going to work on that. So that would be an ex example from my list this week that would go into that box. Um, next, we've got the not important but urgent tasks. These are the ones that you can perhaps delegate if you have someone to delegate, if you have other professionals that you work with, team members, um, or even uh, have yourself to complete it uh, if you need to, but only after you have lived and played in the first two boxes of do and decide. Once you've been in those boxes, do and decide, then you can get to the urgent and not important things. If you can't delegate it and you are doing it yourself, then um, that's fine, but just you know, group them together and do them after the other items have been complete. This way you haven't depleted your energy and focus. We only have so much like bandwidth, I guess, for lack of a better word, to you know, complete what we need to do in a day. And a lot of people talk about willpower. For example, when we talk about health and I was in the health, I'm still in the health business for a long time. It's like, if I could just make myself, you know, do this, uh, that does not last and that does not work. And that's not a long time sol solution. Um, so it is really all about um harnessing and focusing our energy on our do and decide boxes. And then what is left, we can focus on the delegate. Last week, I talked about, um, or one of the previous weeks in February, I talked about uh, a power hour, which is something I schedule every week. And that's a lot of those things that are urgent, but not important. Because I know the power hour is on my schedule every week. And you can go back and look at that video if you'd like, either in the Facebook group or on the YouTube channel because I know there is a time for those things. So if it's if it's urgent, like it has to be done today, um, then it's probably in the do box. But if it's urgent, like it does need to be done, then it goes and it's not gonna take, you know, a huge amount of time, then it goes in this delegate box, even though I will sometimes be the person actually completing the task. So I do have a fabulous um, virtual assistant, shout out to Amy. Uh, However, there are many things that fall into this green box, this delegate box that I do. Many of them go into the power hour, which I just finished this morning. So um, I just spent an hour knocking off these tasks um, and they were urgent, but um, I guess well, it's sometimes a little important, like paying uh, taxes on my rental property, um, scheduling uh, an order that needed to go out, confirming some appointments. They have time sensitivity to them, um, but you know they don't have to make you know anything like that. So they have some time sensitivity in those examples, but um, I can complete them myself after I do the other things, right? So, and then finally the box I already mentioned, the not important and not urgent tasks, dump them, dump them, delete them whatever you need to do. So just a couple of tips that I, I jotted down in, for using this matrix. One is make to-do lists. Make a grid like this if you want. Um, you know, draw it, whatever, whatever works. And this helps kind of brain dump and you can hold yourself accountable for the things that you have prioritized. I do this all the time. And you can put the things right in the box. And I'm sure there is some kind of online template <laughs> that you can do that with too. 
set a limit of the number of items you put in each quadrant. There's just no way you can have 50 urgent and important items. There's no way. And if you find that that's what you're doing in your business, well, first of all, we should talk that and get curious about why that is and how we can eliminate that overwhelm and create focus and prioritization. Uh, secondly, if you find yourself in a job where everything is urgent and important, then it is probably time to have a direct and open um, sit down with your manager or supervisor to reevaluate the priorities of the position. Um, so that is really uh, important. Not too many tasks in any one quadrant. Um, always question whether it's worth doing or not. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that we do just because, especially in bigger corporations, just because that's the way it's always been done. And even in small businesses, I, you know, have done things over the years where I'm like, why am I even doing this? Why am I spending time on this? And realize that sometimes, um, you know, it's not even worth doing. You can always go with that um, principle, eat the frog. I think that was maybe Mark Twain's uh, principle, but there's also a book by that name that you can look up. And that's really um, doing those hard things first. It's, um, questioning, is it worth doing? And if it is, then um, if it's from the do or the decide quadrant, do it when you have the most energy and momentum. Um, another tip is, is using the Pomodoro technique, and that is having short like work sprints followed by rest. A lot of people recommend uh, 50 minutes followed by a 10 minute break. Those breaks are so important, not just for your physical body, if you're sitting all day in a chair in front of a computer screen, for your eyes, for your bone structure, but also for your brain. Those breaks are really important. So if you find yourself working all day, eating lunch at your desk, I've been there, done that, no more. Um, that is not how I work. And I don't, it, you don't get the best of me if I work like that. So that's important. So the Pomodoro technique, focus on one task and then take a break and do the next. Um, another technique is, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later in the month when we, when we continue our conversation about rhythms and especially end of the day work rhythms, is plan the evening before and decide what those tasks are. So that's important as well. Um, eliminating distractions, that is easier said than done, but absolutely essential. I was just talking to someone, I can't remember who it was, just like the like a day or two ago, and we were looking at our phone and like the little notifications. Oh, it was yesterday. I remember now who it was. And when, when it says like 100,000, like there's a little red bubble over emails and it says like, you know, 50,000, 100,000 emails. Oh my gosh, that just makes my head spin. Um, so to me, notifications are distractions. So on my phone, my computer, my iPad, I have no notifications except texts and phone calls. I don't get a lot of phone calls. So the only notification, the only red bubble, I would show you my phone, but I'm filming it on Instagram, so is um, texts. And even those, I will let them sit there until I have a fo focus moment to sit and respond to texts. So um, eliminating distractions. Don't let other people define your priorities. If you do, you will be on the hamster wheel for good. If you want to get off the hamster wheel, out of overwhelm, into ease and peace and productivity, then don't let other people define your priorities. Again, if you're working for a company, I've been there as well, then that's a conversation to have with your manager about having some uninterrupted focus time. Um, so you, even if you are in an area or an environment where there's a lot of distractions, headphones, even if you're not listening to anything or just some kind of like ambient music, or um, for me, if the music has lyrics, I'm not really great at focusing, then that kind of distracts me because I'll start singing along. Or even uh, binaural beats, there's great binaural beats for focus, you can look that up. So that's helpful. And then any tools that help you stay out of bad habits. So the do not disturb tool, there's many tools that can block social media. I have time limits on my social media apps. So um, that can keep me from browsing endlessly or falling into the, the social media hole. And then, um, in terms of the delegate box, if you are delegating and you have people to delegate to, even if they are family members and you're using this for personal 
management, then keep track of the tasks you assign and delegate to other people so that you can check in and find out their progress. You can do that you know, write it down on a piece of paper. You can, there's software for that. You can use a tool, project managing tool like Asana. I use that for some of my projects. Um, I That is something that I used to struggle with. I would always be like balls out of my court. I'd answer the email, give it to someone else and then delete it. And it was out of mind, out of sight. And sometimes I would forget to, uh, you know, it, it it could fall through the cracks potentially. It's always good. Even if you have really strong team members and such, it's always good to know what was delegated so that you can be sure nothing falls through the, the cracks. And then finally, um, try not to procrastinate too much, even um, or overmanage. You're even overmanaging your to-do list. I am totally guilty of that. I do overfunction with my own to-do list, but I'm working on that. So this is, I'm going to stop the share here on our Facebook group. These are a few tools that you can use or one tool that you can use with a few guidelines to help you get into your work rhythm. The um, Eisenhower Matrix, decision-making matrix, you can look it up, you can read more about it, but I find it helpful in when I have a lot of things to kind of just say, okay, what's important here? Where are the deadlines? What is pressing, right? Um, one of the projects I'm doing right now is managing this health summit for one of the uh, businesses that I work with. And there is a clear, there are clear deadlines to that. There's a date that this is happening. There's a date that promotion needs to get out. So I need to sit down and always do a little brain dump of what goes in the box for our urgent and important items each day. So that's an example of how I use it. And remember, even if you know about this tool, read about it, heard about it, are you using it? That's the question. Because if you only remember one thing from today, information does not equate with transformation. Let me repeat that. Information does not equal transformation. In order to have transformation, information is helpful, but implementation is what gets you there. Implementation of the information creates transformation. So with that, Get into a great groove of a great work rhythm today and I'll see you next time.